UMass Lowell honoring athletes and coaches past and present. Part of the ceremonies on Tuesday, May 12th. Four people inducted into the university's Athletic Hall of Fame. Among that select group, former UMass Lowell Riverhawk track and field head coach George Davis. Davis started the men's program at Lowell Tech in 1970 and continued to coach at U Lowell and UMass Lowell. He was at the helm for 33 years. He was introduced to the gathering Tuesday by athletic director Dana Skinner. Coach George Davis literally built the program at Lowell from scratch. Starting the men's track and field program in 1970 at LTI and the women's program in 1990. He led UMass Lowell to the NCAA Men's Cross Country National Championship in 1991. I know I was there. It was cold. And he was named the New England Coach of the Year. Are you ready for this? 19 times. He coached 78 All-Americans and 34 New England champions. He holds the year 1983-84 as one of his favorite. When UMass Lowell captured the Eastern League Championship in all three, cross country, indoor, and outdoor track and field. He is a member of the Pinkerton Academy and Plymouth State Halls of Fame already. Please welcome into the UMass Lowell Athletic Hall of Fame, Coach George Davis. I think I need to boost the seat. Here we go. I want to thank so many people tonight. I obviously can't do that in the short period of time after 33 years of coaching here. But first of all, I'd like to thank the person who, or persons who nominated me and certainly the committee who put me into the Hall of Fame. I'm very happy that I'm a member of the Hall of Fame. And I know that the athletes that put me here deserve this award because they are the ones that did all the work. I want to thank each and every athlete who ever came to practice, who ever wore the uniform. Thank you. And my family's here tonight. I thank them. You cannot imagine what it is like to be a track coach's family, where you coach year-round, recruit year-round, tend to the family year-round, and go on for 33 years. And there were so many people that passed through our house at one time or another. Diversity was never a problem with my children growing up. I want to thank all of you and have a good evening. We had the opportunity to sit down and talk with Coach George Davis. So now, that conversation with UMass Lowell Hall of Famer George Davis. I'm not the first, I won't be the last, and this isn't the first time I've said it, but congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm very, very proud to be here. Were you surprised? I was surprised when it happened, because I didn't know when it was going to happen. But I have to admit, I thought it probably would happen at some point. What does being inducted into the university's Hall of Fame, what's that mean to you personally? It means to me a tribute to all the people that I coached, and they deserve it. They're the ones that did the work, that put the numbers on the board, the banners on the board, and so forth. And I get a reward because of their diligence. That's a wonderful thing for them. A great deal of success during your time coaching here. The program just developed in spectacular fashion. Is there a recipe for success or is there no road map that one can automatically follow? I'm not sure there's an automatic road, but I think there are some things and it is to incorporate as many people into solving your problems as you can as you grow. And I don't mean that they're problems but they are always something, as you grow, there's something that no one's ever done before, and you need help to get through that, to convince other people that that need is to be done, and it's a good thing for everybody. My theory is you have to enroll the whole community, the university community and the greater Lowell community, into this. And if it wasn't for the people that are out there and that were at the university at the time that wanted to step forward with me, it wouldn't have happened. Do you feel as though you picked track and field, or did track and field pick you? That's a good question. Somehow 
how track and field picked me. I was very intrigued in track and field when I was in a college student as a physical education major. And I did some studies in track and field and so forth on things. I had to do studies in physiology of exercise, and one of them was in track and field and so forth. So it fascinated me about all of the different body types and what have you that could be successful in the sport. But I never thought I was going anywhere with it. It was just a, a sort of a fascination. But when I had a chance to choose between coaching baseball and starting a track program, and I had played baseball and coached baseball, and I even umpired when I was in college, and I thought, you know, kids get enough of that. Let's try something else in the community. And that's why I got involved in it. It wasn't anti-baseball. It was just that they were playing all these leagues and everything. And I thought, there's no way they're going to pay attention to what you're doing here with all these other things going around. But track was new, and it was a great success at the middle school thing, and it just took off. It got me a second job, and that job got me a third job. When one's an athlete, we go through all these youth programs to learn how to play the game. How does one learn to be a coach? I don't know that. I know one thing. I learned my interest in it by watching television in the early 50s, even in the late 40s, and watching NCAA events and watching coaches working, doing things. And somehow that fascinated me. And when people said, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, coach. I had no idea what that was. And I, I, I knew no coaches until I got into middle school where I actually had a coach. But I always wanted to be one. And I have no idea why. But I always, always wanted to win something that had the NCAA emblem on it. And there was indeed with the cross-country team a national championship. How did that feel at that moment? That was uh, overwhelming. Never in my dreams as a student athlete, either in middle school, high school, or college, that I dream of ever being on a winning team or of all things coaching one. So it was beyond my dream to do that. Are there particular moments, events, uh, or maybe a moment at a practice, but are there particular highlights that stand out in your mind? I'm sure there are. I don't think of those things a great deal because I would never say that athlete's better than this, this team is better than that, this moment is greater than that. Every time I thought I had the greatest moment, I had a greater moment. And so I, I really can't do that. I remember having a national championship in the fifth year coaching at the college, the fifth year that we had the program. And we had a national champion and I thought, wow, that doesn't get better until I won the nationals until I saw one of the uh, women, it was 5'3", jump 5'10", and I, you know, I just, I saw one of my high jumpers open up at seven feet and clear the bar, and I saw this, and, you know, I, I, I can't imagine a, a person placing at the pen relays, it just so many of those things and they just it's like one upsmanship and so when in the end I can't say one's greater than the other unless I say the last one because that's the most memorable. It almost sounds as though the things that stand out in your memory most are not necessarily events or moments in time but the growth of the members of the team. Well th there's one thing that tonight there's a, a young gentleman here he's not young but I guess and everybody's standard but he was my first track captain and he had to run the track club for three years in order to have it looked at as a possible varsity sport. And he did that from his freshman year on. Upwards of 30 people on the team. He was coaching them, raising funds, travel, doing... They had to do everything to prove that there was a need. And that's why I got hired. So I met him in August of the year that I got hired. And we had this big chat about, Coach, can you really coach? Can you really do it? Are you dedicated? <laughs> he told me he doesn't have the answer to that question. Yeah, he told me that time. <laughs> But that's the way he, I mean, he's just a really, a very lighthearted person. But he went on to run in the in finals of the New England Championships when the New England Championships was everybody in New England going full boat for that championship. He made the finals his first year, and uh, Dave Hemery won it, and Dave Hemery won the Olympics in Mexico City in the fall of that year. So, I mean, uh, how can I forget that? And even Bobby Hodge coming on campus to run in the Division One All-American in 1976, the sixth year that we had the program. Actually, the fifth year. Those are things, I, I can't say something trump those. I mean, when I was building a program, it was so important to everything that we did to prove that we could coach and get people to events and so forth and so on. George, again, thank you. And again, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm enjoying this evening. Hey.